All right, hello everybody. Today I've got a Godot Steam tutorial. It's a modules tutorial, so if you haven't installed modules before, quickly, uh, they are just a little folder that goes inside the Godot source, and when you recompile the engine, it starts adding functionality to the engine. Uh, now the one that I want to do today is Godot Steam. This will help us talk to Steam with our uh, with, with our Godot engine. So once we have this installed, we're gonna have access to a bunch of functions which are also located all the way at the bottom, which are all of these uh, little ones. So we've got stuff like, uh, you know, get Steam ID, get the user Steam ID, we can get the uh, username, the friend count. Uh, it actually has uh, options to start doing matchmaking so you can find lobbies on the Steam servers and then you can use your own PCs to do peer-to-peer -peer games. Uh, so that's pretty easy matchmaking, right? And uh, from there, that'll integrate into the Godot 3 high-level API pretty easily. So this is sort of an int introduction of uh, how I'm going to go about making multiplayer games. Uh, so I would suggest starting here if you're trying to do multiplayer stuff. Um, this isn't something that you need to integrate right off the bat uh, before you make your game. This is something that you can bring in afterwards, or if you're trying to get your game on Steam, this is, some, this is a way to integrate uh, all the features that you might want. So... It's not overly difficult, but this module is a bit more complex than most modules. Uh, the reason being uh, is that Steam has its own set of library code, so that version, uh, those versions may never match up. They might just be, like, completely off. So, basically, Steam's going to release its own uh, versioning, Godot's going to have its own versioning, so we need to build the bridge between those two uh, pieces of software, and that bridge is not overly hard to create anymore. Uh, thanks to this piece of code. So what you should start with is, you know, a terminal. Uh, if you're not familiar with the terminal, I suggest getting git bash, which I've linked in the description. Um, and I can't really go into the git commands. There's too many to start doing it. The main one that you're going to want to use is the git clone. Uh, I would suggest just using a terminal for this tutorial uh, to help you practice if you haven't done that before. If you have used a, a terminal, this should be pretty, pretty simple. Uh, if you've compiled the engine with the terminal before, this will be no big, uh, no big deal at all. So basically, what we want to do, we want to go to uh, this repository. So I've linked the repository, and I've also linked the documentation for this module. Uh, and basically, we want to ooh, where is my keyboard? We want to clone. Uh, we want to clone this repository. Oh my gosh into a folder called Godot Steam. Now, if you don't want to do this through the terminal, that's fine. There is a button called clone or download, and you can download this as a zip instead. It's just the screen button. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you're on the master branch and you didn't accidentally click into the GD native version uh, because this will be for the modules. And GD native will come later. So once we've downloaded this and unzipped it, we should have a folder somewhere called Godot Steam, and this will be a capital uh, G and a capital S. And inside we've got a folder that has a lowercase g, lowercase s, Godot Steam. That folder in there is going to be the one that we're going to move into our source code to uh, add this functionality. However, we need to add some files to that, uh, and that's not overly hard to do. So you do need to make sure that you can download the Steam SDK. Uh, this isn't something that I had problems doing. I just logged into this website, which I've also linked below. I've logged into that with my Steam ID and password, and I used the Steam Guard stuff, and uh, it gave me direct access to it. And I can't remember if I've ever set myself up to be a developer on Steam or not. Um, you may need to trigger some flags to do that, but uh, please let me know if you run into problems trying to download this SDK, because that's going to be a pretty important part to getting this tutorial started. So, for me, I've kept that in my downloads folder, which I can show you right here. Uh, and you'll end up with a file that's like steamworks uh, underscore SDK underscore the version number. Um, so once you're in there, you just want to go into this lowercase folder and then unzip the Steam SDK. And this folder was already here before, uh, but it's now what we just did, we unzipped a bunch of stuff into that folder because the Steamworks SDK comes in a folder. Once you unzip it, it comes in a folder called SDK. So it just extracted everything that it had into this SDK folder. So we've got a few things that are, you know, a little bit different. We've got uh, a bunch of folders in blue here, and then we've got a little thing called put SDK here. This is something that we can remove. So if we take that, oh, put, there we go. And 
we don't actually need some of these folders, and I can show you which ones we need to delete uh, quickly, but there shouldn't be any crazy, crazy problems, including these, uh, needlessly, if you've done that. Uh, but I would like to remove them just to make sure that we aren't moving over things that we don't need to move over, and we're not doing extra work that we don't have to. And we're not taking up extra space in our good of source code that we, you know, ultimately don't have to do. So now, we've been left with two folders called public and redistributable bin. Now, I'm going to make sure that you note uh, what's in this redistributable bin folder. So this is what you're going to be able to uh, redistribute as the library. So in here, we've got access to the... In here, we've got a bunch of different platforms. So whichever one you're on, you're going to need to note the file in here. So I've got one called Linux64. That's the one that I'll be running. And it's just got a file called steam, uh, libsteamapi.so. So that's the one I'm going to be using. Uh, this guy's got instructions for Windows, if you want. Um, they shouldn't be overly different. You just need to make sure that you know which libraries are, are relating to your platform. Uh, oh my gosh. So what is important to note is that a DLL will probably be for Windows. And then in the Win64, we've got uh, something as well. So we've got the, uh, you know, the APIs that we need to use. So I'm just going to make sure that you know that the file is there because we're going to need to copy it later. So if we just back out to the uppercase Godot Steam, uh, we're left with a uh, our module folder now. So this Godot Steam will be a completed module that we're supposed to drop into our Godot source code. So if I back out to my home folder, what I would normally do, if I didn't have a copy of uh, Godot sitting on my uh, desktop already, what I would do is I'd go git clone, and then I would go to the engine right here. I'd slap, oh, I'd slap in HTTPS in front of this, and then I would put that right there. So you need to make sure that you've got a protocol in front of this when you're doing git clones, uh, nothing too crazy. So this will make sure that we've got a Godot engine. I already have it. Uh, I actually have one that's already related to the 2.0 2 version. Uh, so when you download it, it's automatically going to download the most alpha branch, which currently, as of recording this, is the 3.0 uh, branch. So what I've done is I've created my own uh, Godot 2, which is just the same as a git clone, but once you go, uh, once you git clone it, you're going to end up with a folder called Godot. You go inside that with a CD Godot, uh, and then you're just going to git checkout into a different branch. Uh, so I'm going to check out the uh, 2.1 branch. It's going to say that I'm already on it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, switching to new branch. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. Um, so that'll switch us into the 2.1 branch, uh, which I believe was uh, on the 2.2 branch recently. Either way, what we've got now is a thing that looks awfully like if we go into here. All of this will be basically exactly the same, unless I've added something else. So the thing that I did add was this, was I added the lib uh, steam API. So I copied this to the uh, root directory of the Godot, because this is where I launched Godot from. This is going to be important later. Uh, but right now, what I'm going to see, or what I'm going to uh, show you, is if you go into modules, and you list out whatever's here, you're going to find a bunch of stuff that you uh, mostly don't understand, or you, you don't need to understand. Um, but what I've already put in is my Godot steam version. So I will, to show you, I'll remove that. And to copy it over, I'm going to copy from my home directory, the Godot Steam. Um, and the Godot Steam here. Okay. And we're going to copy it to you right here. Mm -hmm. Right. And we'll just copy this to you right here. So now, if we go back up, you'll see that it's back. Uh, I did remove it with this command right here, and I brought it back with the copy mm -hmm. command. So now that this is sitting completely inside our modules folder, we can back, oh my gosh, we can back out. Move my keyboard to the side, now it's all weird. Okay, uh, there, that's fine. And 
what we're going to want to do is just recompile. So I've linked all the compilation instructions in the uh, in the description. You should find ones that are platform specific. The one that I'm using is Linux. So all I did was uh, I just did a scons. Um, here, I'll show you. Oh my gosh. I just wrote this inside the directory that we were supposed to be in. <coughs> and that will trigger a recompilation for our engine. So this is just going to compile the Steam module that we've got going. It's going to tell us that it's done. And then when we run it, this is important. We have to make sure that we don't change our directory when we run it because we need to make sure that this uh, libsteam API is still here. It needs to be directly beside wherever we're going to run it from. It doesn't need to be beside the executable itself, just where you're going to run it from. Uh, and we'll find that if we run it from a different place, uh, this is going to cause errors. So now when we run this, we're going to have uh, our engine boot up. And I'm going to open my Steamworks project, which will just, uh, it will show us what we need to, um, it'll show us how to use this a little bit more. So there's only a few things that you need to do when you're uh, coding. You need to make sure that you initialize Steam, and you need to make sure that you run the callbacks. Um, these are super important uh, function calls that you need to make sure you're doing. These in here are more uh, frilly fluff that you don't need to include if you don't want to. They're just to show the functionality of it. So we're going to find that once I open my tester scene, it's going to probably crash. This is due to one problem. Uh, Steam is not running. This may seem weird, but you need to be running a copy of Steam. Like, you need to have a running instance of it. Otherwise, it's just going to crash. Uh, the Steam API is talking directly to whichever Steam is running right now. So once I boot it up, you'll see that the Steam, it, it says true. So I'm just going to make you guys note the uh, app ID is 480. Uh, I didn't register this game with Steam. 480 is merely a test, uh, it's a tester. So if I just go to look at my uh, game dev folder where I've got this Steamworks file, uh, and just to prove that it's all the same, it should be, you know, we've got, where is it? The tester scene, the tester DD, and you know, the icon. So that is the folder that this project's running from. But you will also notice a file called Steam uh, app ID dot text. This is a file you need to have in your base project, the root of your project to make sure that this all works. So I don't want to nano equals that. I just want to nano it. And the contents of this folder will, or this contents of this file will just be 480 and that's it. And then you'll back out and save that. So that's another thing that needs to be done before your um, game will actually work. And we'll find that if we uh, delete that file instead of going into editing it, that this will also crash again. Right? So now, where do we go? Okay. So now if I create this and I put back the 480 and save that out, you'll find that this runs again. So you need to have all those things like just working in place. This is kind of the very, very basics of getting started with the Steam API. Uh, this isn't something, especially if you're using the app ID 480, which is the test one, you're going to be very restricted in what you can and can't do with this API. Um, this is more for people who are thinking about they want to get on Steam and maybe it's just kind of getting you excited that, hey, maybe I want to want to get my game on Steam. Just get you started and, and you'll be able to start playing with this and, and maybe have a little bit of fun. All right, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I really hope I explained things clearly. If things aren't clear or you're having problems getting this running, uh, let me know. Uh, I want to move this into a GED native tutorial. Once that settles down, it's really not for developing right now. Uh, it, it's still under development and very unstable. So I was trying to get the GD native version uh, running and I was running into a lot of compilation errors with, uh, with Godot and then also some function call ones that said they were missing. So there's a bunch of stuff that I would like to get, you know, ironed out before I teach you guys what to actually do with the GD native one. This is more of a starter. Uh, so thanks for watching.